Well, Kaplan talked about where the protests, the marches that we've seen happening in London and other cities and happening well pretty much every Saturday and some pretty unpleasant things at times being chanted and being said and some very disturbing imagery as well. Uh, flags that look like ISIS uh, and of course the famous case of the three women with the paragliders on the back of their anoraks. But whilst we of course do give people the right to protest in our country and whilst we're used to having campaigning groups and little protests outside the House of Commons, and one in particular can think of the loud-mouthed, slightly thuggish uh, Steve Bray, uh, who's been out there abusing anyone that supports Brexit now for about the last eight years. I wonder whether what happened outside and what is happening as we speak outside the House of Commons right now actually moves ever so slightly beyond what we would consider to be normal protest, almost becoming slightly intimidatory. I don't know, but GB News's Adam Cherry has been down uh, looking at these protests today, and he joins me now from the Westminster studio. Adam, tell us, please, uh, what you've witnessed, what you've seen. Love to know what the mood in there in Parliament Square is like, uh, and whether it could perhaps be seen to be intimidatory in some way. Well, Nigel, I was there earlier this afternoon at about half past four, which was just before it really started to swell. At the moment, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. The whole, the whole of Parliament Square, footage you're seeing here is, is from earlier when it was, it was relatively tame. But uh, the whole of Parliament Square is now completely full um, of, of protesters. And I'm told in the last few minutes that it is, it is now getting slightly more hostile out there. Of course, it's now dark, and this tends to happen as things escalate over a few hours and as the votes and as the chaos in the Commons unfolds. What was interesting when I spoke to people was, uh, of course, there, there, were, there were plenty of people there who, who recognise that this is a complicated issue and, and you know, we can have a nuanced discussion about it. But it didn't take very long for me to find people <coughs> who were immediately dismissing uh, the relevance even of talking about Hamas in this debate. I had one person say, all you want to do is talk about Hamas. And I said, well, isn't that relevant when you're calling for a permanent ceasefire? A ceasefire with only one side agreeing to stand down is not a ceasefire, that is a surrender. That immediately kicked things off. I was told I was condescending, I was, uh, I was asking the wrong questions, I shouldn't, be, I, shouldn't be, uh, I shouldn't even be pursuing this line of inquiry. And and I wouldn't say it was intimidatory at that point, but it was certainly, if I'd stayed for much longer, it would have become very hostile. And I think Patrick Christie's had a similar experience. So I would imagine, and we must keep an eye on this over the next couple of hours, that there is a strong police presence there. But I would imagine over the next hour or so, uh, it, it will, it will it escalate even more and become even more agitated. Yeah, and you wonder, don't you, when MPs finally leave the House of Commons tonight, what are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to walk through the crowd uh, to go to the underground? I mean, what, you know, what, th 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 this is beginning to raise questions, isn't it, about MP safety, uh, MPs' freedom uh, to speak out themselves. I find that pretty disturbing too, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, uh, one MP told me that they, <laughs> they were not available to speak on this show tonight, precisely for that reason. They wanted to drive home as quickly as possible. So, it, yeah, of course, it's a problem. And there's only so much the, the best police force in the world, which you can debate whether the Met is that. There's no way that they can contain everything, certainly not a crowd uh, of, the, of the scale that is, is growing and indeed is already outside. So it is a problem. And I, I don't blame MPs for, uh, for being a little bit skittish on this one in, in these circumstances. No, it's pretty scary. And I mean, just I mean, to me, I have to say the very thought uh, that here we are uh, with over seven million people on the NHS waiting list with legal migration uh, at numbers we could never have dreamt of, illegal migration across the channel, driving a majority of the population absolutely potty because they can't work out what's going on, uh, the cost of living crisis that people have been through, uh, the increased taxes people are paying, just how tough people's lives are. And here we are in the midst of all of this, and Parliament Square, folks, is full of flags, Palestinian flags. Uh, I mean, this is quite extraordinary that a, a far, important though it is, and I'm not saying that it isn't important and awful what has been happening in so many ways since October the 7th, but the fact that is now dominating British politics is quite extraordinary. Now, Adam, it wasn't long ago when Jeremy Corbyn put a Palestinian flag on the seat 
of every delegate at a Labour Party conference, and uh, Keir Starmer tried to do it, well, did do away with that, and now that presence is back. What I also want to know, and you're not physically there at the moment, I understand that, I wouldn't recommend you go back, frankly, but are we now beginning to see, uh, when you said the mood is turning a bit in Parliament Square, are we now beginning to get the kind of chants and slogans that we've seen on some of those London marches? Uh, I'm afraid so, yes. Uh, in fact, not even just now, but earlier in the afternoon, before it was a significant protest, I heard uh, Israel is a terrorist state, end the occupation. We've heard these phrases before. They are already there and they will be stronger now as we speak. And, and yet I was advised not to, uh, not to go out there uh, myself later. I, I am at this point scheduled to, to chat to Patrick about this as well. But questions are being raised about that because it is, it is starting to get a little bit hostile. So, it, it, yeah, we don't know. It's, it's, it's quite scary. It is. Adam Cherry, thank you very much indeed. And, you know, there's Adam just trying to do his job as a reporter in what is supposed to be an open democracy, what is supposed to be a free country, and him telling us that MPs getting in their cars and driving home, they don't feel safe, they don't want to be there. What is befalling our nation as a direct result of policies of Labour governments and Conservative governments is changing everything about the essential and actually very tolerant nature of our country, changing it in ways that are quite beyond belief, changing it in ways that are depressing, changing it in ways that are frightening, changing it in ways that I'm not sure we can ever, ever row back from.